Hello and welcome to my channel Green Lion Goddess Tarot. This is your weekend reading and we have Pluto nestling into the underworld, deep inside the underworld as it goes retrograde, which will be like a kind of a bit of a deep rumble. It's interesting just as I was tuning into the reading, they were talking about the Wheel of Fortune next to the Lover's Card yesterday and the fact that we've had the Lover's Card coming out, which is, is about our choices or the direction that we're choosing at this moment in time. And they just kept bringing me to the Wheel of Fortune, which is this too shall pass, this too shall pass. You know, time just keeps ticking, the wheel keeps turning, and this too shall pass. So that was the message that was coming in for to start the reading for today, for the weekend. So let's see what else is coming through, what messages are coming in now. And they just keep showing me this like Pluto nestling in. So it feels like it's just like finding its little spot in there and it will rumble away, rumble away. So what's going on for the weekend? Oh, pretty positive energy around at the moment once we get past that Venus Pluto square. The seven of wands, this is getting yourself into a better position, perhaps wanting, yeah, here we have Pluto. Okay, with the death card. Okay, so the death card is about an ending, but it is the plan it is the card of birth, death, and rebirth. And it almost feels like you're getting yourself into a better position in terms of surrendering to the change or some of the bigger changes that are happening in your life at this moment in time. The Eight of Swords, no matter there might be things that you can't see coming up, but is the fool. It's like I'm ready to kind of activate, step into the new, be really present with that energy, be ready to choose some new paths and step into them rather than feel like it's okay to be in this space where there's a little bit of unknown or uncertainty. It's feeling a lot more comfortable with the death card and the full card right in the middle of there. We have the death card represents endings and death, quite literally, things that are passing through our life and surrendering to these big endings. But the fool is like the new, the reset, the birth, the stepping into something new. And it's about to jump off the edge, but it's, you know, it might land where that eight of swords is, where it's like it can't necessarily see that or it's something that it can't conceptually know yet where it's going to land. But it's almost like, you know, this Eight of Swords is something inside our mind that we just cannot see or perceive or intuit, intuit even. But it's between the Death card and the Fool card. They're both coming for it. They're both like the Death card's heading straight for us and so is the Fool. And they're kind of saying this transformative new re reset, new beginning is coming and it's like we can't necessarily see it yet. So with the Six of Cups, it is this sense uh, of just being really present in the moment. This is inner child with the Fool. Both of those are very strong inner child energies. So it's just a leap of faith. Trust the thing that um, the inner child's possibly going to be really strongly guiding you here. So the Seven of Wands, the words I was getting for that was fortifying. It's like I'm fortifying my position in some way, understanding there's still going to be challenges, but in a way the greatest challenge is the resistance to the change. And so I feel like this Seven of Wands has got itself into a much elevated and higher position, a better position to be able to ward off some of those energies that wanted to bring you down in some way. They wanted to pull you into a place where it's like I don't have the energy or I don't feel motivated or suddenly I'm not feeling it or yeah, all those insecurities that could have been coming up with that Pluto Venus square. We're moving away from that now. And then we have this sense with the two of wands. We see the characters there with the world in its hand. There's an opportunity here to shift and change your world or even the way you're perceiving your world here. It's like, interestingly, the fool steps into the unknown, what's in his knapsack. Some people say it's the memories of the past, but he's holding the beautiful white flower with him, which is representative of the white horse of the death card. I'm willing to take my innocence and naivety into this unknown place and surrender to this deeper change. And the fool brings the memories of the past. The Six of Cups represents that, memories of the past. And it's like I'm bringing those memories of the past with me, but that's not something that's heavy, that's weighing me down. 
I'm moving forward into a space where I'm feeling more comfortable with it, with leaping into these this new energy that soul and spirit is. Yeah, it feels like it's kind of this coordinated, like everything's kind of coming in like this. It's going to start evolving and and making. You know, it's going to start. It's it's there. It's it's forming, is what I'm feeling. But yeah, the little eight of swords is like oh, I can't see it. I can't see everything just yet. So the two of wands is yeah, it, choosing a wand and leaving one behind. Something that potentially you were doing or wanted to do or were doing it a particular way. It's like I'm reassessing the path and the way I'm traveling and where I'm going and what's motivating me at this moment. It is about potentially taking those initial steps, working out how you're going to start or make this happen in some way. But it it also feels like you're just kind of more in the flow with the energy of understanding that this is something with the death card, you can't push the timing of it. So they're getting closer and closer, the death card and the full card. When that happens, we don't exactly know. So the timing could be something that's, um, that could be quite literally about the timing when the death meets the full, when the ending meets the new beginning. There's a sense of uh, maybe being able to be ex okay with not knowing that when the soul energies align to the point where it's like this activation but at the same time there's things that we are actively getting involved with in this and the two fire energies the two of wands and the seven of wands this is very you know we've got mars in aries at this moment making a beautiful aspect to Pluto here with the death card. So, and Pluto is next to the Eight of Swords, which represents Aquarius, like breaking free of limitations, breaking free of limiting belief systems. So breaking free of something inside your mind that was, for whatever reason, holding you back from stepping into the new. And then we've got this Mars in Aries energy when Mars is ruled by Aries. And so it's, in its home sign. It's just like, boom, I'm ready to go. Mars is like, I just need to do this. Activation, movement, motivation, drive, creativity, listening to that spark, listening to that spirit. And so there's a lot of doing and new things that are activating here. And it really is this sense of Pluto. And we can see that in this this reading, activating new opportunities here for you and about trusting that and stepping into it. So, yeah, I feel like we've moved on a little bit from that Venus-Pluto square into more like the, like I said, the the Mars-Pluto energy is more like I'm feeling like I'm ready for anything or I'm invincible or I can just do it, jump into it, or I'm just feeling really motivated. So it might be that that energy is starting to get stronger over the weekend than some of the um, more kind of insecure energies that we were dealing with um, Pluto squaring Venus. And the thing with Venus, like I said yesterday, Venus, both Venus and Mars are in their home sign. So Venus is in Taurus and Mars is in Aries. They both work really well. They're happy, <laughs> happy, happy, happy. They're our personal planets. They represent the divine masculine, the divine feminine. So if both of that, those sides of us are going to be happy, even though Venus was squaring Pluto, Venus in her home sign would be that something good could come out of whatever you went, if you went into like some deep, dark insecurities or fears or doubts or whatever was coming up with that, something really good could come out of it. So this actually feels really positive. It feels like finally things could move forward and it feels right. It feels like it's the right shape. I'm okay with not knowing everything. I'm okay with opening my mind to all these new things, that there's perhaps something new I'm mastering along this path. And um, it's the energy of just being really, really present. So yeah, fantastic. Activating new things, but surrendering to the bigger cycles of what is leaving your life, what is ending. So this feels really, really positive energy for the weekend. Make the most of this time because it feels like we've been marinating on some things in the um, 
in these the eclipse tunnels and Mercury retrograde, it feels like we're coming out of that now. We're starting to get the fuller picture. Things are starting to make sense. We, this is the time to move things forward, especially the things that got stuck over the last month or so. And so this is the time to, yes, let's do it. So great, fabulous reading for the weekend. And also I do have a reading, if you haven't already checked it out, around Pluto going into retrograde and overcoming some energy blocks with the particularly the square from Venus to Pluto. So check that out. That will be floating around in the ether around about now-ish. <laughs> and have a great weekend. And please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Love to hear what is going on for you. And take care.